Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I have here another mysterious Ford Transit that's been back and forth to a garage a fair few times trying to get her DPF sorted. So inside the van, it's in limp mode, engine lights on, engine service now code there. Okay, uh, customer's going to have a little talk here about what he's been, what he's had done and what they've done so far. Okay, I've had the, the, the DPF cleaned, the uh, equipment cleaned it. It's been back four times, it's changing sensors on it, but it charged me every time I came out, £60 a time, plus £250 to clean it the first time. But it's just, it, I don't think he knows what he's doing. So. Right, so that's it. Four times went out, they've changed just different sensors each time. Um, took the DPF off, cleaned it. Okay, I'm using the launch, Eurotab 3 scan tool. What codes have we got? You'll never guess. Exhaust temperature too low for particle filter regeneration. Particle filter force restriction, so that's limp mode. Particle filter restricted, and that's it. So, it's never made it more than 20 miles out of the garage before the problems come back. Why is that? You say? Why would it take so long? Why would it take so quick for the DPF to block back up? So, what the van's going to try and do as soon as he's reset it and done all of that, you drive down the road. The van's going to try. First time it's going to try and do its first regeneration or it's going to try and attempt to reach temperature. As soon as you tell it it's had a new DPF, when you take it on the first journey it's going to do that process. And it will just do it quickly and then come back down just to make sure everything's working. It's going to quickly realise that it can't reach temperature here, yeah, because it needs a vaporizer. Now, I haven't even tested it yet, but I know it needs a vaporizer because I've done one of these vans with the same problem. I've seen this same problem every single day for the past two weeks. Uh, I haven't made a video on every single one, but I don't want to bore people with the same videos over and over. But it's what I keep seeing, so I'm going to have to keep showing you, unfortunately. So looking underneath, at least they've changed the oil after they've done the numerous, numerous regions, force regions on it. And we're going to come around up here. And there is the culprit up there. That vaporizer. So now we've got that nice and hot, use a 22mm spanner to get up to it and open it. Now it does take a lot of strength and a lot of effort to get that out, but it is possible. So you can see now that we put some heat on that. It's already sort of semi-cured it, but you can see if we put some pressure in the midivac there, it raises it up. You can see she's bubbling out. Now the heat has sort of freed that out a little bit. It would have been blocked solid completely, but she's still blocked. That gauge shouldn't move whatsoever, there should be zero resistance. Okay, that's the new vaporizer fitted in. Okay, inside the van, 3000 RPM, we have 720 idle, we have 150 pressure, so that's millibars or HPA, so 700 and 150 at idle. Now, again, I'm going to use the Launch UK DPF cleaner. This one's about dirty, it's been rolling around the van. So I've got half a bottle here. Get that in there. Now, we're going to top that up with a little bit of water. Just get that topped in there until she's full. go so that nice and suds it up there okay so we've got the gun here ready to go in we have a little pliers and a pick tool to get the DPF pressure hose off and I do, do get people asking me why do I put water in the fluid and it's all about oxidation helps it oxidize up which is gonna help clean the fluid out a lot uh, the soot out a lot better now surprise surprise I can tell by looking at that it hasn't been off in a while so, I'm not sure why this hasn't never been off. It's, they should have went through here to clean it. Maybe they've done it from the top. So I'm gonna use that to, to take off the clamp there. Then I'm gonna use this little pick just to get under the lip. And then go around, all the way around. 
like that just to break it loose or break the seal now I'm just connecting up my piece of fuel hose here and that connects to the DPF gun here and of course that is connected to the gun now we just squeeze the trigger get the fluid in that's connected to the compressor there which should kick on any second unless it's gone flat okay we've got some spare batteries here we'll get a spare battery into that um, compressor Let's disconnect this. Connect back up the proper holes there. That goes to the pressure sensor. And we'll use the little pliers just to bring that over. Lock it back in place. Okay, now we're back in the van. We need to switch the key back on. Get this connected back up. So it's lost connectivity there. The ignition's been off. So now we're going to start the van up. and we'll hold the revs back up around 3000 RPM now we're just going to keep an eye on the pressure we're already halfway down that's within 5 seconds of starting the, the van so we'll just hold this revs here for a few minutes and keep an eye on it Okay, let the rest go for a minute. Idle is now around about 20, so it's still been slightly stubborn, but it's only been a minute or so. We'll give it a bit longer. Okay, so we'll just come back here for a minute. We'll take it for a little run, clear the codes. Uh, we're gonna go to power control module, and we will reset the particle filter learned values. Now if we come back in and read the fault codes, they should still be there, because we've already cleared them, like I said. Um, oh, no cancel, retrieve again. So now if we clear them this time, they should stay away. Clear. So now if we come into the data stream, exhaust, temperature, uh, we need that one so we're gonna keep an eye on these two levels here now you can see after all that ribbon it's still only at sort of 65 degrees on the DPF so you can see the temperature the lowness of the temperature that that fluid takes to work it, it's it's flushed out that DPF basically at like 60 degrees so now when we take it for a drive we should see that temperature increasing fairly fairly lot um, and these numbers here now should start decreasing as well so you can see there we're at sort of 190 degrees that's normal temperature where it would be now that's the temperature it would reach without the vaporizer working with the vaporizer working that should reach sort of 650 degrees so you can see there it didn't quite catch it quick enough but it went up to six 650 degrees now it's coming back down Okay, we're back from the drive so like i said it goes to 620 degrees um or maybe 650 in around that area 
just for a second or two and then it drops back down so now i'm just going to clear the fault codes again all right now we're going to do the the oh sorry another region don't know the region where are we were in the wrong area we're going to go sorry got that a little bit wrong there okay so press that by mistake there particle filter so we're in the par power control module reset the particle filter values this just resets the calculations of the dpf so the calculations of the dpf are going to be way off because of what happened with the with the blockage um and there is no way of clearing the engine light without doing this you have to reset the values but if you reset the values while the pressure is still high in the dpf you will damage the dpf it will get hot i know these vehicles it will get extremely hot the van will cut out and it will refuse to restart for like an hour um that's sort of a, a safety thermal cutoff. So now that's been done, I probably should have showed you the other live data. So it's going to reset the soot. Should have probably showed you that beforehand, that one. And we have now differential pressure, that one. And we have exhaust gas temperature, number one, three, that one. We'll change that to. HPA and we'll start the vehicle up. Make sure it's out of gear. So we have now three HPA at idle and we'll accelerate it up to 3000 RPM. And it is 70 72. Let's drop down a little bit, just increase it up a little bit. So it's sort of in the 70s there. So that's plenty good enough. Now, once the vehicle has been driven a bit far, I've only driven it like a half a mile or a mile maybe. Um, once it's been driven a bit further, the vehicle will, will then clean itself as well. So now everything's in the right order where it needs to be. It's back around normal operating temperature now because it doesn't need to regen but when the vehicle does want to regen it's going to be able to reach the 600 degrees so when it doesn't reach 600 degrees bam the engine light comes back on and that's why you're only getting sort of 20 miles out of the garage after it's been cleaned so we're back out of there now we'll come back in just read the fault codes and make sure that they're all gone and nothing else we need to clear so that's all good and that's the job all done okay so that's another four transit there fixed now like I said before, I'm um, doing probably probably five to ten of these a week, depending on, on, on the workflow, of course, uh, and what other vans I've got booked in. Now, I don't think it's an unreliable system. Some people seem to say, oh, there must be a problematic van. I think this is a very reliable system. I mean, you usually get between eighty to 150000 before you get this problem. All, all you've got to do to fix it is put a new vaporizer on. It's as simple as that. Um, maybe get your DPF cleaned if you've been driving it around like this guy's been doing. Um, but this 2.2 is, is a very reliable van in my opinion um, I don't like the 2 litre Eco Blue tr Transits I think they're they're not, not half as reliable as these ones um, and what I will say as well is I thought you know when I put these va these videos on I must have put 50 videos of these same, same repairs on these vans on and I thought when I put the first one on I thought well now I've showed everyone how to do it I'm probably not going to see so much of these jobs anymore but it seems like it like it's never ending they, they just they just keep coming um, and people don't just don't ever learn um, how to solve the problem because every every customer has got the exact same story they've had it back at the garage four times seven times eight times uh, they've replaced all the sensors but they're not replacing the vaporizer um, so a very common mistake that everybody makes so like I said I hope that um, does give some sort of um, awareness to people and we'll see you on our next video